The topic of Open RAN continues to raise the blood pressure of many in the mobile infrastructure sector. So where are we in terms of market developments and the trajectory of the radio access network equipment sector? Well, the recent Fuse event in Madrid gave us some hints. As Ericsson pinned an Open RAN badge on its corporate lapel and Vodafone's efforts continue to be a key indicator of how brownfield strategies might develop. But what does this all suggest? Well, I'm talking today with Francis Hayson, Principal Analyst at Appledore Research, who three years ago published an Open RAN report that looks more and more prescient by the month. Uh, Francis, welcome back to the Telecom TV airwaves. Uh, good to see you as always. Now, uh, just to set the scene, can you just remind us of the headline takeaways from your 2020 Open RAN report? So yes, Ray, we, the three years ago, we, we really sort of tried to look a little bit more beyond the sort of technical specification for Open RAN and what, you know, what, what is the business rationale for all the bits of Open RAN um, and also a little bit about how people would use that, what would be the innovation. And, and frankly, we, we came to the conclusion that actually, at the end of the day, there's not that much about Open RAN or certainly in terms of front hall um opening up the front hall that's actually necessarily against the major players um and also that um a lot of the new opportunities in open run were actually um what i would term is somewhat in the future versus the immediate needs of of ran and and the the, the base the basic headlines of what we predicted at the time was that we we headline number one was that we thought ultimately there's a substitution market which is that the whole market will ultimately be open um even if it has um exclamation marks around that um term open and that um of that openness probably approximately 80 percent of that will go to the traditional vendors or new integrated vendors that come out of an open RAN um, solution but are presenting an integrated solution, potentially from one vendor, but potentially an, an integration of, a, uh, of, of, of an ecosystem. And then we really only saw about 20% of the market as being um, truly open RAN, multi-vendor, multi um, trying things, putting things together, um, uh, an iterative approach to innovation using the uh, using the open RAM. Um, and and the, I, I guess the final headline in that one was actually in that twenty percent we were seeing the highest value as being system integration. About a third of what we saw as the opportunity in open RAM was going to be that system integration, putting the parts the parts together and making them work together. Okay, so uh, essentially, and I remember when this report came out, um, you know, uh, essentially it was saying, well, you know, Nokia and Ericsson are not going to be uh, basically uh, edged out, even if the whole world goes open RAN, if the whole mobile sector goes open RAN, this isn't the end of the Nokia and Ericsson uh, RAN success story. So uh, three years later, how are your predictions shaping up? In one sense, actually, um, scare, scarily so. And we, we just recently published a, 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 an article on LinkedIn about this one. And it, it, if, if anything, um, I think I've over or, or Apple has overestimated um, the market for the, the truly disaggregated um, multi vendor open RAN. Um, and that a lot of the sort of key announcements that are now being made by some some of the operators that are um, were were the very much the, um, the, the, the 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 sort of innovative ones with the open RAN are going the way of the traditional vendors, the Nokia's, um, and we'll come on to Ericsson in a, in, in a little while. But also the the new the new vendors, um, somewhat somewhat driven by the the the. the the environment of um, swap out of Huawei and ZTE, um, that you've got the new to the, the Samsungs, maybe the Fujitsu's and the NEC's, which are much more of a kind of integrated solution than they are a kind of true um, mix and match um, solution. Um, the 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 other thing which I th I think we didn't really characterise in the original report, but it, but it's very clear. There's a very distinct 
difference between what I would term is the the, the technology science led aspects of Open RAN, where you've had um, some some of the major um, players looking at how I can um, get innovation, get um, multi vendors working together, and then its ultimate um, procurement and ultimately moving into live where. Um, we, we heard a lot about the, the, the need for a more diverse supply chain, but when it comes down to it, I think the ability, um, I, it, it's, it's a horrible term, but the one throat to choke app, uh, application, that when something goes wrong, somebody owns the problem rather than they don't own the, the I've got 20, 20 different suppliers, all of whom don't quite own my problem when something goes wrong, um, has kind of trumped that kind of supply diversity at the end of the day. I want something that works, and if something goes wrong, I want to know who I'm going to get paid for, insured by, in all those aspects. And I think that's what's driven this very different, uh, a different approach, and almost the growth beyond the eighty percent of what is happening in open RAN. Um, you mentioned Fuse, um, Ray. Um, the uh, I think this two, the Fuse has been actually kind of a, a clock beat in this sort of uh, movement. Is that you've had last year the Fuse announcement, Vodafone very much a leader in this area, making its announcements at Fuse of its selection of open RAN providers, and those open RAN providers are Nokia and they are Samsung um, delivering their new their new new capability. And this year's announcement where um, effectively Ericsson, not a sponsor at the beginning of the uh, program, but very much the keynote, um, you could argue hijacked um, presentation that Ericsson was the lead, uh, the, the, the lead news in the story that they were, even if somewhat tentatively, uh, embracing open RAN. Yeah, it was uh, came as a little bit of a surprise uh, to uh, many people, I think, uh, in Madrid. But... Um, you know, played into your the theory that uh, you espoused uh, three years ago. Um, so I mean, three years is a is a very long time. Uh, quite a bit has changed within the telecom sector, but also in the macroeconomic uh, environment. Um, in that time, in general, are there any major surprises for you in the way that the mobile operator community has addressed Open RAN as an option? I think that the thing that's surprising for me is the kind of realization that it's it's great to have a, a wider supply chain for this one, but there was a lot of aspects in terms of open RAM which were about this idea of innovation. Um, and I think one of the sort of hard facts about that innovation is that in reality says that we haven't, as a as an industry, telco is not um, necessarily the greatest innovators. Uh, we've introduced, uh, you've got procurement departments that have had 4G, now have 5G, um, new 5G coming in, I've got open RAN as well, and yet my services haven't fundamentally changed as a result of that. I'm still fundamentally an increasingly commoditized voice, SMS and data, data business. I've got more bandwidth, I've got more spectrum, but I'm not doing anything different with that. So yes, I get some operational benefits. I might get some supply chain benefits in in in, in that kind of thing. But if it, if it's my ability to um, you, you effectively use Open RAN as a kind of negotiating tactic with my um, my traditional vendors, I think that in the end trumps trumps it because there isn't really a sort of sense that Open RAN is going to deliver me something that the Ericsson solution or the Nokia solution or dare I say it the Huawei solution as well um, will 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 deliver in this area. And I think it's that 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 lack of a lack of detail about what it, what it can do for the business telco business today to change the business model, not the technology model, um, that is is the key lacking thing here. Um, I, I, I once had a, a conversation with a procurement guy um, in, a, in, a, in a previous history. And one of the things he said was at, actually at the end of the day, all things fail in my organization. But my job is to make them fail for the least cost. And, and I think that's, we could argue that there's some aspects of that in the open round story in the last three years. So ultimately, what does this all mean for the vendor community? I, I, I think I, I come back, the, the, the positive thing is, I'll come back to it, it sounds bad, but the one throat to choke is the critical difference. How it's, it's an opportunity for some of the newer, um, uh, the, 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 the newer players, maybe some of the cloud infrastructure 
um, the, the players of the, of, of, of the world, um, either, either at the cloud, at the, at the, at the uh, sort of the public cloud level or even in terms of um, the overlay um, private clouds in that area, is to take a kind of degree of, yes, you want to be on these infrastructures, but we, we, we can step up to actually validate and verify, verify those, 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 those solutions. And I think that, that that's, that's probably the key thing that is going to uh, allow that 20% of multi-vendor to work. I think the TIP initiatives to, to sort of get um, uh, blueprints of, of how this all works together, I think takes us to a certain level. But I think we need to go, we, we, we need to understand a lot of the industry is not this kind of, I want to do something new, it's just I want to expand my network, I want to do it um, with with a degree of predictability, predictability on 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 that one, and I want to minimise my risk on that one. And I think the opportunity is to go beyond the uh, the kind of blueprint of this all working and actually stepping up much more to what does the overall commercials look like? What does the insurance on what I'm buying there work for? So I I, I see opportunity for vendors, but it, it's not in the it's in, in essence it's not really in the technology area. There's possibly another area. There's, there's aspects of Open RAN which are about the RIC, the, the real-time controller, the non-real-time uh, controller, where there are again there's opportunity for the innovation. But again, I think there it's again how do I package that innovation? How do I show why this this matters? Why if you buy this from new new vendors, it makes a difference to your operational environment, your ease of introduction to the to the network. So the opportunity is there, but I think it's shifting from a technology perspective very much more to a kind of how do you deliver to the business? How do you make this operational? And how do you ensure that this works long term, day one, day two, day three? Okay, so uh, you know, so far. Uh, your your views, your your forecast for for how the open RAN sector uh, was going to play out. Um, you know, it's it's all on track. So, um, do you have any new predictions related to open RAN to share with the telecom TV community? I th I think there's two two areas where I think we 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 see the op I, I mentioned innovation as a as as a key area. I think what we what what we will start to see is a lot more innovation in the whole private private networks area. So a lot of that that multi vendor thing, I think there's a lot more applicability for the innovation in that particular area. That your ability to be able to procure radio devices separate of your um, baseband baseband processing, for example, is actually a lot more apparent uh, need within the um, uh, private private networks uh, space. And the enterprise space, so that there, there is a very clear need to um, to drive that, and I think we will see um, a, a lot more both innovation and use of the open RAN standard in a multi vendor way in those types of environment, merely because it's a very it's a very different market and it's a very different set of requirements that are um, are being expressed there, and to some extent that's already the. The, the nature of the business from a perspective of, of purchasing, there are many, a lot more um, smaller suppliers um, being, you know, Wi-Fi solutions and um, uh, even LAN solutions, which is where, where you're getting a lot more um, small scale vendors. So I see the, the opportunity for Open RAN actually, I think, is, is, is stronger in the private private networks um, network space. Um, the, the, the second thing I think is there will be a strong, I, I mentioned the cloud players. I think there is a stronger role for the cloud um, players. Open RAN is, is, is potentially a gateway for them to have a much stronger position over the whole of the, uh, whole of the mobile network. Um, beyond where they traditionally tended to play, which is uh, sort of supporting the the, the core uh, the core network. Um, so I would expect from both the public cloud, the hyperscalers, and from the um, and, uh, and from the sort of uh, cloud infrastructure players uh, a potential for a stronger uh, a stronger play on that one. And I think they are of the scale where this kind of one throat choke. Uh, one hand to shake um, area that they've got the potential to actually own that at a degree which the the, the kind of uh, the the Maveniers or the Altius or Rakuten um, area they're not of the scale that can make that kind of commitment. 
Okay, right. So uh, some interesting trends to watch there, and I think we, you know, we heard some hints. So there's certainly some hopes uh, that the uh, the private network sector might um, step in and, and light a little bit more uh, fire underneath the open RAN sector in 2024 and 2025. So, uh, Francis, great to talk to you today. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, you know, looking back uh, uh, over the past few years and, and looking at those trends. And, you know, I have to say, you know, well done on the analysis uh, at the end of uh, 2020. And it'll be fascinating to see um, how these trends emerge in the coming few years. So uh, thanks very much for joining us today. That's a pleasure, Ray. And uh, yes, we should, we should do the next forecast. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely.